Good morning. Welcome to R2GT. And thank God this morning we're starting a new series. And it will be taken from the book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 1. Let's open our Bibles to the first book in the Bible. Genesis 7 and 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. May God add a blessing to the hearers of his red word. We want to note that verse because that's a powerful verse when you do a careful study of what has taken place in the first six chapters of Genesis. You recall in chapter one, when God had created all things, and on the sixth day, he created man. And then a woman, praise God, was created as he took a rib from man and made a woman. And then he gave them this assignment. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Oh, yes. Well, what conditions was going on in Noah's day? Well, before we answer that, let's note, since we titled this series, Coming to the Ark, let's get a clear understanding what the Ark was. Now, I hear so many in stories said that it was a boat. Well, that's not true. It was not a big boat. So we, we need to correct that if we're saying that. Actually, the ark was a floating box. That's right. Three levels. That's right. Uh, and it was made of cypress wood. And it was pitched with a tar-type substance what we call bitumen, okay? The ark was 450 feet by 75 feet high and about 45 feet wide. 450 feet long, 75 feet high, 45 feet wide. And actually, what we can compare it to today, and if you've been on some of those great rivers, uh, oceans, I recall even noting when I was watching the Mississippi River, and you see these big barges. That's right. But now, this floating box was like, a barge. It was a floating barge. It was designed to float. It didn't have no engine. No, it, it wasn't powered by steam or coal. It didn't have no helm, no, no rudder. So that's why I said it wasn't a boat. It was just designed to float. That's right. And you'll be correct if you said it was just a floating device. All right. So we have this ark that was designed to float to, to do what? For what purpose? To keep those who was on board alive, safe from the flood waters that destroyed every thing 
that wasn't on the ark. Amen. Note then in the book of Genesis, God's original creation had ceased to reflect his glory to the extent that he was no longer comforted by it. You remember when he had created all things and he said, as he rested on the seventh day, he said, and everything that God made was good and very good. But then, within the first generation, think about it. All behold, there's a change in the atmosphere. The surroundings everywhere was just wicked. So the scripture says that God repented, and, and let me give you an understanding here. He therefore changed his previous course of action toward humanity and determined to destroy it by a mighty universal flood. That's right. And the flood would occur 120 years later after chapter 6 of Genesis, verse 3. And while we're there, open our Bibles now. Please open your Bibles. I want to show you the conditions, and that's going to be our first subtopic in this series we want to share with you concerning that Noah walked with God against or uh, amidst evil surroundings. That's right. Let me say that again. Noah walked with God amidst evil surroundings. You know, some of us don't do well amidst evil surroundings. You know, you hang around a dog long enough, you're going to get fleas. Oh, yes. Sometimes the company you keep, that's right, people you associate with and spend a lot of time with, Unless you're a strong individual and have charted a path to walk in integrity, to be honest, to be humble, to be friendly, to be a loving and caring person, uh, your surroundings can cause you to compromise to their ways. Oh, my, my, my. Well, let's see what Genesis say. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters was born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves of whom they choose and chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for it is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants also on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, 
and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. Oh, my, my, my. Can you imagine the condition proud to the flood? Well, we just read it. First, we note there was a population explosion. So we see that man did obey one of God's commandments at that time. And that was in Genesis 1, where he told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Well, I guess they took that to heart. They took that seriously because when we get to chapter 6, man, there's a population explosion. It's people everywhere. But they broke every single command God gave them about living. They kept only that one commandment. They was multiplying. Oh, my, my, my. You know, can I ask you this morning? Are you keeping the Lord's commandments? Or uh, maybe you are just like these folks. You just keep in one. Mm. Now we find then they was doing any and everything. You note in verse two, there was an outpouring of satanic activity. Satan was busy. Don't that somewhat remind you of what's going on today? Satan is busy. Satan is on the tight. Satan is walking to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, hallelujah. And then not only was there satanic activity, but did you know? In verse 5, in verse 11, all humanity was depraved, wickedness, both in word and deed, was both universal and unparalleled. Verse 5 said, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great. In the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Can can you underline that word continuously? What what is saying here? Man, they went to bed thinking evil. They got up thinking evil. No doubt they was dreaming evil. They had evil on the top of their agenda 24 hours of the day. They was evil. And Noah lived amidst all this evil. But then the scripture make us understand, but Noah walked with God. Oh, come on into the ark, y'all. He walked with God. Well, verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. My, that sounds like 2023. Sound like the year we're living in. You don't even want to watch the news because you already know it's so many bad reports 
You notice lately, it's so much evil going on that when you get on the national news, you ever notice they just give you bits and pieces and then they refer you to the website to get their website to get more information. Isn't that sad? They can't even tell you enough news within 30 to an hour. They said, go on to the website, you get the whole story. That's how much evil is going on around us. We live in a cesspool society. Everything goes. Nobody is lining up with the word of God like Noah. Noah walked with God amidst evil surroundings. Can you imagine when he went down to the grocery store, they, it was evil. When he went to the mall, it was evil. When he went down to Home Depot to get lumber and all the bill at that big old floating box, uh, it was evil. Oh, hallelujah. You better think about it this morning. Well, how is your surroundings? How about the ones, your co-workers on the job? Do you tolerate all they filthy talking and they filthy mouth? Oh, uh, you said, well, wait a minute, preacher. I tolerate it, but my mouth just is bad. Well, shame on you. It's a time we need to clean up our act. Feel God and depart from evil. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is soon to come. Come on into the all. Well, we find out as we look at the text, we said he repented. Let's look at that. It repented that the Lord had made the man, according to verse 6. The Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and it was he was grieved in his heart. And I told you earlier, when we look at the Hebrew and the Greek of this verse, we come to understand there's a literal meaning, uh, and then there's a theological meaning. And when you put the two together, as I said earlier, the right translation is saying that God therefore changed his previous course of action toward humanity and determined to destroy it by a mighty universal flood. Oh, my, my, my. Look at verse 3. When the Lord said, my spirit shall not scribe with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So what the Lord was saying, now some of y'all think that means telling you that's how long you're going to live. No, he's trying to tell you from that point on, verse 3, that Noah was going to preach to those people in that cesspool society on earth, all his surrounding, he was going to give them 120 years to get it right. Oh, hallelujah. Now, you can't tell me our God ain't gracious. Oh, no wonder they pin that word, that song, the words of that song. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Praise God. Was blind, but now I see. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'm glad Noah found grace. Praise God. So the scripture tells us, praise God, that I, all this corruption that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and then 
the Lord began to share with Noah the instructions to build this floating box, this ark. He gave him specific instructions. Look at it. Verse, verse 13, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits and it's high 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark in its side. You should make it with lower, second, and third decks. I told you it was three stories, okay? It had three levels. And behold, according to verse 17, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life, everything Everything that is on the earth shall die. Oh, my, my, my. But I establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark. You and you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that sad? Can you imagine after 120 years of preaching one simple message every day to the people, it's going to rain. How can you can get, I just don't understand how you can mess that up. How confusing can that be? Simple message. But then I think about our day and time. God has left in his word a simple instruction to each and every one of us. You ever thought about it? He said, be ready when I come. Be ready when I come. Then he make us understand. He said, we don't know the day or the hour that he's coming for us. He said, he comes as a thief in the night. Even the day the thief don't call you up. He don't text you. He don't email you. Say, hey, I'm going to hit your house tonight. So I thought I would just give you, you know. I just thought I'd give you some info where you can, you know, maybe you want to keep certain things because I'm coming and I'm going to get it all. No, the thief don't tell you anything. So Jesus gave us a simple message to each of us that's listening this morning. He said, be ready when I come. Oh, hallelujah. Come into the all. Oh, we need to come into the ark of safety. Let's find a place to close it out for this morning. No walk with God amidst evil surroundings. That's right. Now, let me say this about Noah. First of all, Nothing is known of Noah's early days. When we see he come on the scene, he's a grown man, okay? He already got children, huh? And his children, his sons are married. He first appears upon the scene when he's 500 years old, according to the scripture. 
His great-grandfather was named Enoch. And we know that Enoch didn't see death. He was translated. And the scripture tells us in Hebrews, he had a testimony that he pleased God. Can I ask you this morning, are you pleasing God? You know, I found out as I listened to people, and sometimes I have to even examine myself. We could exhaust a lot of time pleasing people and everybody else and not pleasing God. My advice to each of us this morning, we need to make certain we please in God. What about you? Don't you think that way? We need to please God. Why? He the one has a place for each of us for all eternity. So it's worth the sacrifice. It's worth pleasing God. Amen. Now, not only was Enoch his great grandfather, but his grandfather, if you check Genesis, was Methuselah. Now, Methuselah, you recall, now some of you knew that and you didn't even know Christ. That's a talk they even got in the world. The man that lived the longest upon this earth, and that was Methuselah who lived to get to the age of 969. Well, that was Noah's grandfather. And then Noah's father was named Lamech, okay, who was apparently, according to history, was a religious man because he gave his child, his son, Noah, praise God, a name that means rest. And oh, maybe <laughs> if we get time, we, that's, a, that's a whole message by itself. He was given a name that means rest, R-E-S-T. So the conditions, as we have discussed, he lived in a desperately corrupt age when men had become so universal deprived that the Lord was determined to destroy the entire human race because of all the moral darkness and how the entire world was so evil. So we see that in the opening of this series, Noah had to stand out. <laughs> you, ever, you ever thought about it? He had to truly stand out. Nor walk with God amidst evil surroundings. You know, Jesus said in the New Testament to us that know him, he said, let your light so shine. He told us our light ought to shine so and we ought to promote this thing. No, not to be puffed up, but he was trying to say, let your light so shine. He said, man, put your light high up on the candlestick, huh? And, and let it be seen by men and women. Don't you know the world that's so dark need a light? They need to see the light where they can come into the all. So we pray that as we close this morning, I hope you, like Noah, is walking with God amidst evil surroundings. Come back next week as we continue with this new series, Come, into the all. And remember to give thanks.